Hi guys, welcome to the second part of the tutorial. Now we're gonna go ahead and render the table that we modeled in the previous part. First of all, I have to mention that we will gonna use Corona Renderer. I find this to be the best one out there so far, the fastest and the cheapest. First of all, let's go ahead and create the first material, the wood material, the main one. Adding the wood texture that I found on Google, there's nothing special about it. The second material would be the glass. And we should go ahead and create another one for the edges. I'm not sure if I will change the, the edges of the wood planks to make them different or still use the wood one. We will see as we go along. The next part after applying the texture and material is to change the UVW map to make the wood uh, texture fit better on the object. We choose bitmap fit to copy the X and Y dimensions from the file so that we have right proportion on the model. Then we, we scale it until it looks it looks realistic. So to make our life easier we will just copy this UVW map and move along to the other parts of the model and just paste it. We have to be careful here to make some minor changes to the texture like moving it a few centimeters to make it look unique and not uh, as it, as it uh, just being copied. So yeah, pasting it, moving it a little bit to make it unique. For, for the top parts. The next one. Okay, it looks okay. The side parts. Here we have to rotate the UVW map a little bit. But that's it. The proportion will still remain the same. Copying it to the other side. Even though you cannot see this part in the render, let's just copy it. For the bigger part, pasting the texture, moving it a little, keeping the size, the proportion across the entire model the same. The top part, and we have here the glass, let's apply the material so that we can see them differently in the viewport. Okay, next part, let's add the ground so that we can catch our shadows. Let's move it to the center of the viewport, zero, zero, everything out. Let's add the material to the ground. Name it ground material, choose corona material. And yeah, let's make it a little brighter. We will change this in post-production at the end of the tutorial to make it look perfect. Okay, the next part would be to manage the lighting. Let's add a bitmap and uh, an HDRI. We will use this for the lighting of the entire scene. Let's use the texture, choose environment and spherical environment. Now in order to set this up in Corona, first of all, this is what I usually do. I divide it in three, the, 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 entire, the entire viewport. In the right, I have the camera. In the top left, I select the Corona interactive so that I can see in real time how my materials look, how everything looks. Let's change the resolution, choose a generic full HD resolution, OK. Now let's add our HDRI image so that we can light the scene with it. Just drag and drop the texture in the use Corona texture slot. 
Let me just drag it there as an instance and then Corona will use it to light the entire scene. As you can already see on top left, we have the shadows for this interior HDRI. Let's choose white as a background. Next part will be to create a camera. We choose the perspective view, we select the perspective view, then create physical camera from the view. As you can see, a camera was created. Now we have to go ahead and make some minor changes. First, I think that we should change the vertical tilt. This is very useful when you render uh, architecture. But as you can see here with our simple product, simple table, it doesn't really look that good. So I think that we should have to I just blocked that in so that the top left Corona Interactive will always show the camera view. It looks okay, but I think that we can do better than this. Let's make some minor changes to the camera. I stop it for a while because it will move a lot faster if it stopped. And recording the screen at the same time make it look as good as possible. You don't really have to follow the reference image, you can make it look as you like. Let's choose the target and move it to the center of the object a little bit. And then auto vertical tilt doesn't really work for this scene, so we correct it a little bit from there. Okay, it looks better now. As you can see, everything looks okay, but the shadows and the HDRI image could be changed a little bit, so I'm doing that right now. So that we'll have the shadow dropping in, uh, behind the, pro the the coffee table, not on the near, near right. Move it a little more, 0.5, that should do. That should do it, that should do it. Now let's go ahead and change the materials a little bit, add some reflections. Drop the glossiness, because wood isn't that glossy. I'm changing the CPU priority because it doesn't really work as it should, while I'm still recording and working at the same time. So yeah, let's up the glossiness a little, 0.7, I think it looks better, maybe a little more. No, this is too much. Eight. Yes, this is okay. Going, moving on to the glass material. Here we have to change the refraction and the reflection. The refraction should be one and the color of the reflection should be a bluish greenish color because that's the color that glass has in, in real life. Okay, this is, looks okay. Maybe the reflection is a little too high here, the level of the reflection. Let's drop it a little bit, 0.7. That looks okay for now. Next step. Next step will be to select the edges of the of the coffee table and make them and uh, use UVW to tile the texture a little better because right now it doesn't really look that good. So that's what we are going to do right now. I will select the edges and select them by angle. Then using F2, I can make the selection more visible so that I can see how I'm moving the texture. 
I'm using the same size, the same texture as I used for the main parts of the planks because the scale should be approximately the same, even on the edges. I'm trying to see if it looks better, but no. Yeah, it looks okay. Moving on to the other parts, again, using by angle selection, I'm selecting the edges. and pasting the UVW map using F2 to see if everything looks ok Co making a copy so that this I want to change the center part of the texture because right now it looks like a, a big part divided in three but if I make a few changes it will make it unique OK, collapsing everything by converting to polygon. So yes, I think that I should also change this part of the blank. Pasting the texture, UVW, rotating it a little bit, then collapsing everything. I will not change the other parts of the model since this is the only camera angle that I'm going to use. If you want to change everything, you already know how to do that. But from this angle, you cannot see the other edges. I'm also adding a render element, which is wire color, a different mask. This I will use in Photoshop to isolate the background or the glass or the coffee table so that I can color correct them. Uh, one by one. I'm making some final adjustments here. This part was a little too big. So this is for now. Let's render the part. See how it looks. So here is the mask that we're gonna use in After in Photoshop. That's it for now. Now it's time for post production in Photoshop. Drag and drop the image in Photoshop. At the same time, we also need the mask that I told you about earlier. Let's paste it there. Let's create another layer, a white background and use the mask with the smart selection tool to select the background color. Using this and selecting the selection and Ctrl J you can see that I have isolated our model and the background is on a different layer. Using levels and pushing the whites a little bit using and desaturating the shadows because those were a little bluish a little erasing and the model looks a lot better right now let's add some hue saturation for the coffee table give it a little punch a little color and then a little contrast by using levels and i think that it looks oh Here's another thing that happened. I don't really know why this happened, but anyway, using the clone tool, I'm fixing that in a second. Final adjustments, moving the coffee table in the center of the image, fixing the background, and that's it. All right, guys, this is the end of the tutorial. I hope you learned a lot, and see you next time.